Good afternoon and uh, welcome once again to my daily chat. This is episode number 685 and the topic today is some seek love blended with pain, some seek love blended with abuse. What is your love blend? And I'm, before I jump into that, let me choose myself. I'm like really rush into it, but I need to choose myself um, and give you some content or context. My name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't see my broadcast before, and if you didn't see the title above the broadcast, I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and uh, relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which inspires and informs my talks that every day, and also inspires and informs these, um, my, working with my clients. These talks that do every day are called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Art. I abbreviate it to MFTM because, frankly, it's a lot of words otherwise, <laughs> and I'm right room for the title. And so today we're episode number 685. I've done a bunch of these now, over two years worth. And today's, and I do these every day by the way, um, and it's a Facebook Live at 5 p.m. Pacific time in case you want to catch me live. And I do put replays on my business page and on YouTube, and I'll tell you about those at the back end. So today we're episode 685, and the topic today is some choose love blended with, uh, with pain, and some choose love blended with abuse. What is your love blend? And I'm using it this way to make a little, to make a point. Um, it's nothing to do with cocktails or with other recipes, but it's just the idea of how to combine the two because we are wired as human beings with love attached to something else. Almost all of us do. Very few people are actually, I say built, born and raised where love is simply love as itself. For 99.9% .9 of the population, if not 99.999% of the population, Love is blended with something else as the way that we grow up living and loving. So what happens is we are, as adults, seeking love blended with something. I'm using this analogy because I think it's going to land better for some people who don't necessarily see it the other way. For myself, I grew up with love blended with, um, well, the opposite of arguments, which basically meant like playing nice, be nice, no matter what. And so my my love blend was with with niceness in a way and it was great at the beginning but frankly it was very limiting because I didn't have the room to grow beyond that in some ways I was lucky that way because a lot of people I know a lot of my clients I've worked with have come through love blended with something more painful abuse pain suffering addiction abandonment something else that it's been blended with and I'm using this term and I'm explaining to break it down how it works in a moment but what it meant was that as an adult, they're seeking love as, as a conscious person, but they're looking for its blend underneath that at the same time. So imagine yourself basically looking for a certain result, but meanwhile, another part of you is looking for a different result that fits in with that, the blend that goes together. It's fundamental that if you are someone who wants to have a better relationship, if your blend that you're carrying, that those two things, love and something else, are not what you want, you have to look at what it is and figure out how to fix it. So give you some framework of how this works so you may know how to disengage this. Because frankly, there's no freedom without it. One caveat, which I'm going to talk about this. There are some people who do have love blended with something positive. You know, I mean, as much as I say about mine was basically love blended with niceness is because whenever I had an argument in a relationship, I would leave because it didn't fit together. That isn't necessarily the worst experience to have by any means. But there are some people who have blended, blended who have bled love, who have love blended with something more positive. Maybe for them, love only exists with, for example, wealth. Like, I mean, there are seriously people like this who can't be in love with somebody who doesn't have lots of money because they were raised maybe in a very rich environment. So if one in love with somebody who doesn't have that, maybe outside their framework of what they can have. And this is the key, by the way. When you have a certain love blend, it's very hard to love somebody who doesn't fit that blend that you have. So if you have love blended with abuse, for example, take one of the big ones, it's gonna be very hard to find someone to love who doesn't actually bring abuse with them on some level. Now, for some people going like, that doesn't make sense. Like, well, here's the thing. First of all, let me illustrate the point first, then I'll explain how it happens. It may be that you are looking for love as it stands, but again, because you have this subconscious blend underneath it, I'm gonna do the, I'm trying to do visuals with my hands, it's, not working so well, that we're then basically going to draw to us somebody who loves us with that particular mix, that blend, that recipe together. And nine times out of 10, 
And she says, that really nine times out of 10? Most often, <laughs> I'll keep it simple that way. What we draw to us is somebody who will love us initially as it is, but the underlying mix will start to show up as the relationship progresses. And using the abuse as the example, the abuse that maybe you experienced in the last relationship may have been physical. This relationship may not have physical abuse. It might be mental or even psychic abuse. The truth is that until you disengage the mix, the blend of love with something else, you won't be able to love freely. And just a matter of fact, it's the wiring we have as human beings that we, at we basically have an attachment, for want of a better word, to certain patterns that we grow up with. The things we're familiar with, the upbringing we have in our families and our dynamics when we're younger, and I've talked about this many times before, but I'm just playing another flavor to see if this lands for you, is that we are raised in, a, in a, an environment, particularly when we're very young, that imprints upon us how love is expressed. We become attached, sorry, we, we find our love is attached to certain sorts of behaviors because of what we learn when we're very young from our parents. It's the way things are. And so we end up having this blend, this attachment between love and something else, because that's the way it was expressed by our parents in our families when we were very young. I think you get my point. This means that we start taking that blend everywhere we go as an adult. And unless we do something to disengage those two, to take the blend away from the love so we can actually have love free, it's going to keep showing up together. So as an adult, if you've discovered or if you look back at your life, and I strongly suggest you do this if you're single and wondering why love life isn't working. And looking at your past relationships and seeing if there is in fact a blend of love and something else, that something else being the common factor through all those relationships. When you look back and see that, then first of all, congratulations. Yes, congratulations are in order because now you've become aware of what it is that may be not working for you. And you've also become aware there's a common thread because the thing about this is that blend of love with something else is yours. The other people you're in a relationship with may reflect back to you those things, but don't play victim because it's not in them. It's something inside of you that's attracting it. And I'm saying this from a point of view of encouragement, not, not, not to demean you. By not playing victim and thinking it's only somebody else's fault, you can take responsibility and, more importantly, you can take action to change your wiring, your blend, your, your mix of ingredients, so to speak, that you've attached between love and something else. So it no longer becomes an impact. Again, if it's something abusive, for example, if you're raised in an environment that was, or if you're raised in a family where there was maybe verbal abuse that went around the house, maybe your parents were always yelling at you and you thought that was the way love was expressed, that becomes your blend of love that you carry, love and abuse. Now, the thing is, as an adult, you may have uh, nuances on that abuse that you express and you feel. It may become an abuser or you become abused by somebody else. It can work both ways. But the truth is the same blend of love and something else plays out. So as an adult, if you notice in the last three relationships, five relationships, ten relationships you were in, there were abusive experiences through the whole time. That's a very big clue. Just perhaps, just maybe, that there's something inside of you that's perpetuating that experience, which because it's inside of you, you can change. And this is the power you have, is the power to change what's been going on. So I'm just looking where to put the threads back in. Hang on a second. This is the work that people don't talk about when they're doing dating coaching and, and matchmaking, saying, we well, just go find somebody, you'll be fine. One of my frustrations with that is that without this piece of the puzzle resolved, it's very hard to find a relationship that will work for you that doesn't contain that blend again, that attachment to the old paradigm that you were dealing with. So when you go and spend your money with a dating coach or relationship coach who doesn't include this in their work, you're being shortchanged. And I'm being very blunt about this. I've seen people who, well, clients come to me because they work with somebody else who didn't get what they needed, but this is part of my fundamental work with my clients. This is the deeper dive work I do. The surface stuff is easy. To have you start loving yourself, not so hard. To get you visioning what you want to create and attract your life, not so hard. Doing the deep work, that's where the real rewards and the real transformation happens. I've really had to start looking at my own work and what I'm doing because I don't fit in with other coaches, just to be transparent. I don't fit in with the, um, the general relationship coach dating, prof dating person. That's why I hate that title, because I don't coach. I facilitate, I guide, I help my clients heal, transform, and become amazing people. 
to attract the love they really deserve without the attachment, without the uh, blend with something else that doesn't work for them. If you found for yourself, and now you look back and look at your own history and go, you know, there's a, rec there's a resonance here, I understand, of the love that I wanted was blended with something else, it's time we talk. I'll put some links in the comments, you can find me later on to, to find out how to work with me. But I want to make clear that this is something I bring to the table as my gift, my service and my work with my clients because it's fundamental. It's a game change for most people because they don't usually get the understanding that this is part of the healing journey to get to where they want to go in relationships. Very few people, maybe not you, it certainly wasn't me necessarily, were raised in perfect households. Almost all of us, I would suspect, were raised with some sort of challenging paradigm with their parents. Some people, very few people though, are raised in loving, conscious, awake, aware families. I wish I had been, and I'm sure some of you wish you had been too. But the reality is for those who haven't, all is not lost, let me be clear. There's freedom, there's availability, and there's opportunity to have the love you really want the right way. What should I say the right way? The unmixed way, which is fully expressing love, which is joyful, uplifting, and positive. It's available to all of us. However, until we disengage that, I should mention one, I'll get back to that in a second. Until we, get disengage, <laughs> until we disengage that, it will keep happening the way it's been happening. And if that's not working for you, then changing it is what's next on the, on, the, on the agenda for you. Now, just one quick thing. As I mentioned, I keep doing it this way, like a love above and then the mix underneath, because that's really about conscious, subconscious, awake and, and asleep. It's the autopilot running underneath this piece down here, which is the mix that goes with the love that is running perpetually, um, automatically, and without any conscious control. That's part of the challenge is how do you do that? And that's the work I do with my clients. To, to put it in a simple answer, because I, I can't, I, I won't, mm, I'll say this another way. <laughs> I talked about can't yesterday, I can't use that, I, I won't be doing that again. <laughs> in simple terms, the way this works is doing a lot of reintegration of memory and reintegration of heart. And how I do that is in my work, and to explain it now doesn't really fit in the paradigm of this, of this video. But I want to make sure you get this, 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 piece of the puzzle because it is something I've talked about many times before but this way just feels more like it might land for some people so for some of you watching this this may be the first time you get it and go oh now I understand this and hallelujah if that's the case because I've been wanting to get this message out in a way that lands for quite a while I hope there's been a value to you this is something that's fundamental in the area of dating relationships and yes as much as I've been talking about other things this past few past week or two about languaging and about just <laughs> about taking the Bible apart which was a few days ago. Yeah, watch that broadcast, that was fun. Um, upsetting for some people, but fun. But this is my core work as well about relationships. And I want to make sure this is on the table. It's something to give you to um, consider for yourself. So if you are willing, ready, and, and um, choosing to look for ways to disengage your love from the mix, the blend you've had with something else that doesn't work, it's time we talk and I'll put the links in the comments to reach out for me to have a chat and also um, just for the fun of it I'm going to put my self-love practice in there as well because for some people that's the first step is to love themselves more they have then the courage to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the work that needs to be done um, this is basically my in my mission my work my calling in the world and so this is what I do to serve my clients Even though I work with women primarily some men who get this and want to do the work I work with them as well. If that's you, then reach out. It's so amazing that so many people don't get this. But if you're watching this and you do get it, you're way ahead of the pack, so to speak. And so I want to make sure this message lands because it is really my, my wish for you to have the most amazing, loving relationships. And relationship, if that's singular, if that's what you want, because that's the way it works best. So with having said that, um, well, I think I've just said enough to give you enough to work with. So this is one of those things to consider. So my invitation to you now is to consider what I said, to look back at your own life, your own relationship, your own experiences, and see where maybe it's not working the way you want. If that's true for you and you want to get some help, the links in the comments I'll put in afterwards will help you. Um, if you feel you want to share this with anybody else, please feel to share this out with somebody who might want to catch this. If you have questions or thoughts and you want to ask me questions, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. 
This is my daily nudge, my daily inspirational talk, my daily uh, vent sometimes. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do invite you to watch the replays or watch this each day when I join in. So replays you can find in the following places. This is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned. So if you want to watch me live, it's on facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. If you want to watch the replays, all 680 plus broadcasts I have now, you can find them on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, as well as on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to that. And then there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. I think that's about it. I'm going to have some links in the comments after I sign up. You can check out those if you're interested. I do invite you to look at this for your own life. What is your love blend? Where is it you found yourself not getting what you want because love is not complete for you? This is how it works. Hang on. <coughs> Almost made it through without coughing. Oh, well. With that, uh, we'll sign off. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me. I will see you again tomorrow. Again, thoughts, questions, put them below. I respond when I sign, I respond when I sign off. If you want to get help, do the next step, which is get help. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.